blessings beloved welcome back anastasia cosmic astrologer going to give you guys some ideas to think about regarding midpoints in the chart and just how important necessary and powerful they actually are to help you understand specific uh, themes narratives frequencies that are super super important and if you uh, did not look at these midpoints you could be just missing a, a very important picture to your life story to you to your chart to the expression of your chart to the expression of your being and your life right so i'm going to use a really wonderful powerful example that i actually uh, was given to when i first started studying astrology 25 years ago and my mentor teacher who's actually one of my best friends he used this example um back then actually back in the day and uh i haven't forgotten it because it's an incredibly powerful example and it's the um french naval officer explorer um filmmaker innovator scientist photographer author researcher who studied the sea and all forms of life in water right so this is i'm talking about jacques costu a french man um, who was born in 1910 so a long time ago about 100 years ago um, and his chart is incredible for for a clear-cut story clear-cut perspective of the power of midpoints okay um, so before i bring up his chart and show you the, the the beautiful demonstration and example of the power of midpoints i just want to just cover a little bit of ground so the first thing is this there are very specific midpoints that i would recommend paying attention to in your natal birth chart and i will tell you what they are in addition to that another way you can use midpoints is when you are actually looking at transits okay uh, when you're wanting to see what's what's going on at the moment for you or over the next 12 months or however long you wish to look at that so one thing that's that can be missed that can give you a lot of information uh, would be for example transiting uranus at the moment is at about um, six degrees of taurus right so six degrees of Taurus might just happen to be a really important midpoint in your chart. So even though transiting Uranus is not forming an aspect to anything in your chart, it, visually when you're looking at it, so it's not aspecting your sun, your moon, your Venus, your Mercury, your ascendant, uh, Mars, Venus, you know, just to keep the personal planets in play here. Um, but it might be, conjunct a midpoint in your chart that's at six degrees Taurus which is an important midpoint for you that's just one example so you can use the transiting planets to see if they're hitting off any midpoints in your chart okay they I'm not saying every single midpoint is important necessarily but there are some that are and you just need to know what they are and how to find them right so in relation to your own birth chart the midpoints to work with and to pay attention to which go back to the personal planets always is your sun moon midpoint okay so whatever sign your sun is in whatever sign your moon is in there's going to be a midpoint right that belongs to the distance between the sun and your moon when we say midpoint that's exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about if we look at the moon over here and the sun over here, just as an example, you can do this with any planet or planets. You want to know what is the distance between them, right? And therefore, what is the, the middle ground between them? That's the, that's the midpoint, right? The midpoint structure. And you might have natally a planet on that midpoint. So you might have the sun and moon in having no aspect together right that might be one example so you find out where the midpoint is and you might just see that you have saturn on that midpoint or you have venus on that midpoint or you have mercury on that midpoint or pluto whatever any planet right and that midpoint is going to tell you how that energy of that planet that's on that midpoint is actually 
speaking through the relationship of the sun and the moon in your chart. So the sun and the moon relationship is being filtered through whatever planetary body is found on that midpoint, if there is one there, okay? It doesn't mean that everyone's going to have one, but there will be many people that do. So sun, moon, um, Venus, Mars. So let me just back up. The sun, moon midpoint is the, what is it? It's the inner feminine and inner masculine, right? It's the 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 mother father kind of energy archetype the feminine the masculine the yin the yang right within your own self and obviously then it extends to your your mother and your father it extends to the relationships you have with women and with men so all of that gets filtered through whatever planet is at that midpoint right the next midpoint to look at is mars venus and that obviously has to do with the world of relationships right Desire, sexual desire, sensuality, passion, Mars, sensuality, Venus, um, just the whole relationship style that you have, right? Um, your experience in the whole relationship dimension of things in your life. So if you have a planet on that midpoint of Mars, Venus, that's going to describe and give a narrative and a theme a very powerful thing relative to how the Mars Venus works in your life. In addition to whatever, you know, sign Mars is in, whatever uh, sign Venus is in, whatever houses they're in, whatever aspect they have to each other. So midpoint structure is another added layer for interpretation, but it's very, very specific, right? Because what, what it's saying really is that the two planetary bodies that you're looking at, so say Mars Venus, that the relationship between them and what they reflect based on the sign, house and aspects they have could be um, heavily impacted by a specific planet on that midpoint. So then Mars and Venus is not going to act alone. It's going to act through that body, whatever body that is that's on that midpoint. This is how important midpoints are, right? Um, the next really uh, important midpoint to pay attention to is Mars Saturn midpoint. That's one of the most difficult midpoints. The the Sun Moon Mars uh, Venus they're not difficult midpoints, but then again, it does depend on what planetary body you have there. But that's going to add to the story, right? Um, but a Mars Saturn midpoint is the most difficult midpoint because you're talking about two malefics and those two energies combined are a, they can be very, very powerful for better or for worse, but they are very difficult energies to work through. So when you have a planet at that midpoint of Mars Saturn, it's got a lot to say about how you operate with your desires, your willpower, Mars and Saturn, where you may feel constricted, limited, or, or where you are really organized and structured as well, very disciplined. So, you know, it has a few layers and levels to it. But the Mars Saturn midpoint is, is usually quite a, a source of difficulty. So it's worth actually looking at to see if you've got a planet there and, if you know, what, what is the planet that's there. And therefore, um, the Mars Saturn midpoint is going to act through that planet that is on that midpoint of Mars Saturn, right? The other really important midpoint to pay attention to, and for this you need an accurate time of birth. The ones that I've just uh, stated, Sun, Moon, Venus, Mars, and Mars, Saturn, you don't even need a time of birth for that, which is, that's an, uh, an added bonus to people who don't have a time of birth. They can actually work with midpoints in their chart and just get a lot more information about their chart that's meaningful and useful through the midpoints and you don't even need to have a birth chart for that. So you just need to know the distance between Mars, Venus in your chart, Sun, Moon in your chart, Mars, Saturn, right? So you don't need a, an, an accurate or even a time of birth for that. Um, because those midpoints, they're not, it's not about, uh, the, you know, looking at the birth chart. It's about looking at, well, Mars is in Gemini. Venus is in uh, Leo and you need to know the, the degrees of the zodiac, there's 360 degrees, right? So Gemini sits somewhere in that 360 degrees. 
and then Leo sits somewhere in that 360 degrees and you've got to find the midpoint between the two. Now, I mean, obviously a computer software program can do that for you in a flash. And I'll show you how it's done in Solify in case you have Solify or you might have another program that has a similar sort of function. The other midpoint that I, I know for a fact is incredibly powerful and I always pay attention to is the ascendant midheaven midpoint. Okay, that midpoint, if you have a, a particular body there, it could be an asteroid goddess as well, not just a planet, that body that is on that midpoint of the ascendant midheaven, that has a huge story about your entire life, literally about your entire life, because it, it's bringing in the ascendant, you, the soul, and the midheaven, your external self, as it were, your professional self, um, and also your life path, direction, vocation, career, things like that. So for the ascendant midheaven midpoint, you need to have not only a time of birth, but an accurate time of birth. This is where you need to have your chart rectified in order to, because you might see a planet and obviously the planet of the, that's at the midpoint of the ascendant and midheaven will generally, in most cases, be, be lying somewhere in the 11th house. And you might visually look at your chart and see there's a planet in the 11th house and if you don't do the correct um, calculation and if you don't have a correct birth time, you might just visually see a planet there and say, oh, that looks like it's right between my ascendant and midheaven, so that must be on the midpoint. It's not necessarily the case, which is why you need to, A, have an accurate time of birth because if your time of birth is wrong, even if you use the program to help you define what is the midpoint between my ascendant and midheaven, if your time of birth is wrong, then that midpoint is not going to be correct either, right? So just a couple of things to consider. Um, okay, so what we have is in midpoint structure, we also have what's called the near midpoint and the far midpoint and the indirect midpoint, right? And I'll show you visually what that looks like and that way it'll make more sense. So I'll go straight into sharing my screen and um, just bringing up the chart of the Jacques Costeau gentleman. So here is his chart, okay. Now, what we're going to look at here is his sun moon midpoint okay now remember he so take note his son is in gemini one of the things that gemini connects to is the lungs and writing right writing books um so he was he was the man that co-developed what's called the aqua lung aqua water, lung, Gemini. Now the aqua lung is just a term that was used to describe the uh, oxygen tanks that deep sea divers, you know, put on their, on their body uh, when they want to have oxygen in the deep sea, right? So those oxygen tanks, they were called uh, aqua lung. That's the original term. And this man, Jacques Cousteau, was uh, the guy who basically created it, co-created it. Okay. And he's a Gemini. <laughs> and so what he created was something that supported the lungs and breath specifically under water, right? He was also a filmmaker, an innovator, a scientist, a photographer, and a writer, an author. So the author writer component connects to his son in Gemini, the filmmaker, photographer, and the uh, aqua lung connects to Neptune, okay? So in, in short, what we have here is if you look at his son's in Gemini and his moon is in Leo, now the midpoint of his sun moon is actually Neptune. So in a nutshell, that's what we're talking about. The, here we have an individual photography, filmmaking, um, uh, t -t 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 photography and filmmaking specifically relating to him. Let me just see what else there was going on here with him. 
he's written a, a series of books and one of his first books was called The Silent World, A Story of Undersea Discovery and Adventure. How Neptune is that? His son in Gemini enabled him to have the skills for writing, desire to write, son Pluto. He was an innovator, an adventurer, son Pluto, right, in the ninth adventure, ninth house, Sagittarius house. And the Neptune is what took him down into the sea. In fact, he and his wife did um, a lot of filming under the sea their, their, their whole lives they spent they spent most of their lives in the water in neptune and here he has um neptune right at the midpoint of his sun and moon now if you were to not have any awareness of midpoints you would um you'd miss that you, you'd see the neptunes in the 10th and you'd go wow you know okay neptune in the 10th conjunct mars so that makes it extremely prominent, just that Mars-Neptune conjunction there. And Mars-Neptune can be photography, glamour, charisma, and he was quite a charismatic sort of bloke. He wasn't necessarily um, your, your classic sort of um, glamorous, aesthetic uh, person to kind of look at, as it were, but he had enormous charisma just through the things that he did and what he created. Um, and the impact and impression that he left as well, and just the the undeniable connection to Neptune, the sea, the underwater, the the, the world in in the unconscious, as it were, and and it manifested through this three D dimension, through his exploration of the underworld. Loads and loads of films were made between him and his wife of the exploration of um, the sea. So you would say, okay, he's got Neptune in the 10th house. That's really prominent. Neptune in the 10th house can manifest and correlate to so many different things, so many different things. You wouldn't necessarily get that this guy um, was going to, you know, uh, take the path that he did just because he's got Neptune in the 10th. But what makes it so that, that Neptune, this, this primary energy at the midpoint of his sun and moon. So the sun and moon is, it's, it's the, the sun is how he was going to express himself, how he was going to achieve his goals. And the moon part of it was what gave it form and structure as well, because the moon gives form to things. It gives uh, form to what we feel and what we need and our emotional security and things like that but it literally creates form so it's the yin and the yang you know merging right and with the neptune there right in the middle so neptune just basically influenced the whole expression and manifestation of the sun and the moon and it's in the 10th house so therefore he was going to be known publicly he was going to be famous from this right somebody else could have a, a sun moon midpoint with Neptune there, uh, maybe in the fourth house, uh, somewhere down the bottom of the chart, they won't, it won't necessarily be a, a life of fame, but because Neptune's in the 10th house, it did actually bring him fame. So photography connects to Neptune, film, filmmaking, things like that, filmmaker. Um, and what did he film? He filmed everything to do with the under world of water. So there's my example. I, I love this example. It's, it's, it's just so literal. You, you can't beat it. You honestly can't beat it. If you find a better one, you know, please, please share because I'd love to know about it. So I just want to show you on Solifier, if you want to um, find any midpoint in your chart, but I would highly recommend working with the ones I've suggested. So you'd, you'd hit um, reports, okay, and on this uh, right-hand side you can see all these tabs, right? Now, I've hit it and it's gone to my other screen, so I'm just going to bring it onto this screen. So once you hit reports, it gives you this, uh, this window and it gives you a whole bunch of options down here. So what we want to look at is we want to go to where it says midpoint listing. Okay, so we click that. It's very simple. Uh, the first half of this page shows you the midpoints between every single planet. Okay, and here it is. We, we just want to see, um, and it's right at the top, okay, because it starts with the moon. So it shows us 
uh, moon slash sun okay so that's that's telling us that this is the degree of the midpoint between the sun and the moon in this individual's chart what is that degree it's 16 degrees of cancer in six minutes now let me just move um, that over again where's his neptune 17 degrees of cancer so it's about a degree and a half or so of being exact that's a very close midpoint okay and there it is so um sun Nep uh, sun moon midpoint neptune in the 10th house he was famous for for creating the aqualung gee i mean how literal can you get so that's my example um there there are other examples of, but i just love this it, it, it's just fascinating and you can you can actually just um go into wikipedia you can read about this guy um i'll just show you actually um so you can see as well um so you know there's wikipedia there's there's the things that i read you know he was a french naval officer explorer um conservative uh, filmmaker innovator scientist photographer author and researcher he studied the sea of all forms of life in water he co-developed uh, the aqualung pioneered marine con conservation and was a member of the uh, academy francais and and it goes on and on and on right so um let's see if i can move that now <laughs> okay so you can yeah you can read more about it but i mean you, you get the message you can see how clear this is hopefully because it's you can't get much more of a clear example of this so don't forget just check out your own um uh, Sun, Moon, uh, Midpoint, uh, Venus, Mars, Midpoint, Mars, Saturn. Now, by the way, there is a book called, um, so Midpoint, the, the astrology of Midpoints was developed about um, about 100 years ago by a German guy called Reinald uh, Urbiton, right, and he's got a book called um, combination of stellar influences and the whole book is just on midpoints he was a german guy now that book is fantastic but i have to admit that if you rely just on that book to um to get your understanding of midpoints you just need to understand that this this guy who was an astrologer an author you know he's from germany a hundred years ago where things were pretty, pretty bleak, pretty dark. So when, when books are written through particular authors and astrologers, it is inevitable that, that the time, the era, the period they were living in is going to greatly, greatly influence their perception and understanding and their insight as well so in other words the book that is written is quite bleak it's really intense and it's quite bleak but it's incredible right you you really have to though be able to have a really solid foundation of understanding the archetypes the zodiac you know the symbols the planets you've got to have that to begin with a general understanding at the very very least but but it realistically you need to have a more expanded deeper understanding of the archetypes and the planets because then when you're looking at midpoint structures you can use your own intuition understanding knowledge wisdom right because if you just rely on that book by Ronald Overton you you might be left feeling well gee this is all just so negative because <laughs> a lot of it is unfortunately right so I'm just warning you okay if you, if you do get that book but um, if you get that book and you have the ability to understand the symbols of astrology and the archetypes from a, a, a level of depth through your own learning study research insight etc then when you combine the two you can get a beautiful understanding of the midpoints that you're actually looking at. So, and again, don't forget, you can look at um, planets at the moment, for example, and where they might be hitting off a very important midpoint in your chart that, that can really describe an episode of something you are going through at the moment. It could be for the next week, it could be for the next few months, it just depends which planet is transiting that midpoint and how long it's hanging around that midpoint. You know, if you had, um, 
if you had transiting Saturn, okay, conjunct your sun moon midpoint at the moment, that could equate to depression, for example. That could equate to uh, your mood being really low and just really off. You know, you, you don't feel yourself. There's something that just doesn't feel quite right. There's a heaviness, there's a, a, a dark sort of heavy kind of energy. It's dense and, and it feels really awkward and uncomfortable. See, you, you won't see that because if you don't know what the midpoint is to your sun and your moon, um, you won't know that. Second of all, if you don't pay attention to those midpoints relative to the current transits, you, you won't see or know about that. But it could be very, very important because it could, in the example that I just used, transiting Saturn at the midpoint of your sun and moon, you know, it might just be a period of like a month or two weeks where transiting Saturn is right on that midpoint and, and it, it just, it makes life really, really bleak, as it were, from your perspective during that month. And and the reason it's, it's great to know that is because it will help you understand, A, what's going on, and B, that it's just a transit and it's going to pass. So sometimes when we feel that kind of heaviness of Saturn, it can basically colour our entire outlook of, of life, right? And it, it can really influence and impact us in a way that um, is very difficult to manage and deal with unless we know that it's just a passing transit and there are things that we can do to help lift that. So that, that's another reason why it's important to know. Okay, I'm going to leave it there and I'll be back because I've got heaps to bring um, to you guys, Venus retrograde, Pluto retrograde um, and, and some other things as well. So I'm just trying to work through clients and, and readings and things that I've got as well. And I'm just trying to live and breathe and, you know, just take time out for myself. So um, see you guys very, very soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this. And if you have any questions, if anything wasn't clear, just leave it, you know, in, in the comments. And, um, yeah, I'm happy to respond and engage as, as best as I can. Okay, see you guys soon. Much love and blessings and thanks for watching. Bye.